Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I hope you're doing well. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and thanks for all your support recently. It means the whole world. So today, obviously, I'm on my own because me and Robin and Chaz don't live together. So we're in a national lockdown, can't see each other. So we thought we'd film some videos separately, but talking about the same thing. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about uh, the new year. We're all gonna film some videos separately about some shit that we wanna do with the new year. This like concept was inspired by Emma's Rectangle. She did a really cool video about the new year and her intentions and stuff. So go and check her channel out. She's really nice. And today I'm gonna to be talking about three habits that I wanna make in the new year, three achievements and three pieces of advice. I like new year, I feel like it's a restart in some way. You don't need a new year to set goals and kind of rethink things and um, just do it whenever you need to, you know, I think it's important to recalibrate. Habits are like hard, aren't they? The point is that it's something that becomes natural and something that you do habitually <laughs> and that can be difficult but I feel like a year is a long enough time to like really get into the swing of habit. So the first thing that I want to talk about is not letting bad seconds or minutes or hours turn into bad days and weeks and months. I know that sounds a bit strange but for some context, I struggle a lot with black and white thinking. Something in my brain says that nothing is grey, even though everything in life is grey. Um, everything is complex, everything is so much more complex than black and white, but that's just something that in my head, like, that's just the way I view things and I'm really trying not to. Because it just leads to things like, so for example, I'll spill, I'll be having like a fine day, I'll be feeling fine. And then I'll spill a cup of coffee or something, not a big deal at all. And that could ruin like my whole day, which sounds ridiculous, <laughs> but it's just the way my mind is sometimes. And obviously it can be to do with bigger things as well. And I think you've got to give yourself the time and space you need to feel the way that you need to feel. Um, but also like just because you've had a bad hour in the morning doesn't mean that you can't have a good afternoon or just because you've bad, had a bad day doesn't mean that you're going to have a bad week and I think sometimes I wallow in feelings and I let myself feel for too long and just because I've had a bad minute doesn't mean that the hour is going to be bad and doesn't mean that the day is going to be bad and then the week and then the month so I think I got better at dealing with that last year I want to get even better at it I want to make it a habit where when something bad happens, I don't immediately think everything is awful, everything is going to be bad forever because I've spilled this one cup of coffee. I want to be able to feel how I need to feel and then move on from that as soon as I'm ready to. My second habit for 2021 is to stay in contact with my friends and family more and just reply to messages more on my phone. Oh my God, I am so bad at this. <laughs> So like I used to, before the pandemic, I was really good at keeping in contact with my friends a lot of the time because I was so social. I used to go out all the time. I used to go to gigs all the time, see my friends all the time, see my family all the time. I, I've never been that good at replying to messages like on my phone and stuff. I've never been that good at it. But because I saw everyone in real life quite regularly, it didn't it wasn't that big a deal. I was a bit slow at replying to messages. But now that we're not allowed to see each other, I mean, I'm really bad. I do try and check in on my friends and my family. I do try to. And like even just like sending each other memes and shit, that's a form of communication. So I try my best. Um, but I just think I need to be better at it because I mean, this is the way things are going to be for a while now. I'm not going to be going to gigs with all my friends every week for a while. So I just need to get better at it. Oh no. I wanted to put my hot water bottle under my jumper because it's so fucking cold in this flat, but you can really see it. <laughs> Maybe I'll just turn it on its side and have it on my tummy. The last habit that I want to make in 2021 is to hold on to the good habits that I've made in lockdown, even when the restrictions change. Before lockdown, there were so many things 
to do with like self-care and just my general well-being that I was horrendous at so like I just I, I've realized that I just didn't eat before I barely ever ate and when I did eat it was just like random on the go things like a chocolate bar or like a burger from McDonald's and I don't think I realized how much that actually affected like my mind and my body which sounds dumb because uh, if you don't eat you're not gonna feel well but I just couldn't connect the two things together but then in lockdown that's just something that I'm so much better with now I think part of it is because I've got more time um so I can take the time to make meals for myself and make good meals I'm way better with eating regularly now even if it's something that's not good for me as long as I'm eating it's better than nothing I'm way better at that I drink loads of water um I sleep way more regularly I go for walks every day that's really important I want to keep that up I let myself just be more like I let myself just exist more I don't have to be doing anything or I don't have to look a certain way I don't have to be on i'm just existing and that's really nice i want to hold on to all of those things all of those good habits that i've formed during lockdown that i never ever had before and couldn't figure out before and now that i've formed them i just really don't want them to go away when lockdown changes because like obviously things aren't going to be like this forever i'm not going to be at home all the time forever which is a good thing but also i know that if my life starts getting busier again it's gonna be so easy to let those good habits go and I just don't want to I want to no matter what happens with the restrictions this year no matter what changes I want to keep those habits up I am in control of those things no matter how busy I am or how much things change I can control those things so I want to keep them up now I'm going to talk about achievements which sounds similar to habits but it's more like so when we were talking about this Robin made the example of like a habit would be like to run more but an achievement would be like or to run a 10k or something like that that's the difference that we're talking about between habits and achievements the first achievement that i want to talk about is that i want to read more books than last year last year i didn't read a lot of books at all i used to read so much like when i was in school when i was in college i used to read all the time and i just don't anymore and I don't know why. I'm not going to put a number on how many I want to read because I don't think that's going to be helpful for me because things change all the time. Like, especially this year, I don't know how busy I'm going to get or how quiet things are going to be, depending on what happens with the restrictions. So, but just as long as I've read more than last year, which isn't going to be that hard. <laughs> I think it's, I've read like less than 10 books last year, so it's not going to be that hard to read more than I did. The second achievement that I want to make in 2021 is to write more songs than I did last year. Last year, I didn't, I feel like I didn't really write that many songs at all. In 2019, I wrote a lot of songs and that was when we formed Big Fat Big. Me and Robin and Chaz did a lot of songwriting together. We wrote a whole set and more. That kind of creativity is like my favourite thing in the world. I love songwriting. But last year, I think the reason I didn't write last year is because I felt that like, what was the point in writing if no one's gonna sing it? Which is dumb. I think it's just the thought of like, well, if I write this song that I really enjoy, I can't even meet up with Robin and Chaz to see what it would sound like together. We can't practice as a full band, like with Joe. We can't play gigs, so no one's gonna hear it. So like it's just kind of frustrating. We couldn't record because the studios were closed and we had no money. Um, so it's just kind of frustrating to like create something that you really love and then just not be able to do anything with it because that's like that's what I want to do. That process is just my favorite thing in the whole world. I feel like that whole process to me is what I enjoy the most as opposed to just songwriting on its own. I do love that, I do love that part, but I think it's just because it's part of the whole thing. I think that's part of the reason why I love it so much. But that doesn't mean that I shouldn't do that first bit of the process because that's what I can do on my own, no matter what happens with the rest of the world and the restrictions and stuff. And it's definitely something that, like, the more you practice, the better you get at it. And it's just fucking naive of me to think that I can not practice songwriting and then just be good at it like that's not how it works for me also I feel like I really miss the creative 
energy of just like getting all of these ideas in my head onto a piece of paper or like into a voice note. I really miss doing that more. I still did it a lot last year. I just want to do it more. I just want to get better at it. I just want to do more. Hair. That's deeply annoying. Again, I'm not going to put a number on how many songs I want to write because I think it's too... I don't know. That feels weird. It's too hard to like say for definite how many songs I want to write. But I just know that if I write more than last year, I'll be happy. The last achievement I want to make for 2021 is a bit personal, but I feel like these things should be talked about more. So I'm going to talk about them. I want to get to a year of being self-harm free. I don't really know what more to say than that. <laughs> in the summer, I won't say when, but like in the summer, I'll be a year self-harm free. And I just really want to make it to that goal. I believe that I can get there. I believe that I can do a year. Progress in mental health is so complex. And it's so much more complex than just like little goals like that. You can self-harm and be and feel way better than you have done in years. And also you can not be self-harming and feel really and be really suffering with horrible things. I understand that it's far more complex than just being a year self-harm free. But I also think goals can be helpful to have milestones to look forward to and achievements to celebrate even if it's just little things, I think that's really important. And that one for me is a big one, um, to be a whole year self-harm free. Obviously I've still got a while to go because it's not until the summer, but um, going well so far. <laughs> what time to be alive? Three pieces of advice for 2021. I struggled with this one when I was writing my list for this video because like, honestly, who am I to give advice? <laughs> We can all learn something from each other <laughs> and also it might just be nice to listen to. The first piece of advice that I'm going to talk about is that the way that you talk to yourself matters. Now, I know that sounds cliche. There's a lot of talk on the internet about positive self-talk and about how important it is. It is so important and I'm not just here to say that. I'm also here to say that you are not the exception to the rule. The reason I say that is because that, that's something I really struggle with. I know that positive self-talk is so important. I know that the way that you speak to yourself in your mind and the way that you perceive yourself, it can be one of the most important things in your life. I know that. And I know that it has a huge impact on the way that you live your life and the things that you're able to do. I know that. But there is something in me that says that, yeah, everyone else should love themselves and everyone else deserves to feel that and deserves to feel positive about themselves and have a good perception on who they are. But not me. <laughs> I have this thing in my head that just says, yeah, but not you. You deserve to hate yourself and you deserve to feel bad things about yourself and have a bad perception of yourself. You deserve all of that suffering because you're not a good person. That's just what's in my head. Like, obviously that's not true. I'm not the exception to the rule. I'm not fucking special. I'm not <laughs> like, I deserve to love myself in the same way that I believe everyone deserves to feel that. I deserve to not wake up and be awful to myself all day, which is a habit that I really struggle with. I deserve to just not hate myself. I deserve to, even if I can't love myself, which I think that I can, but even if I can't, I deserve to just feel neutral towards myself. Um, whether that be to do with like the way you talk about your physical being, like your body or the way that you look, or if it's about who you are as a person, whether it's about what you can and can't achieve or what you should be doing or just the, the, the whole perception that you have of yourself, it should be a positive one. Obviously, no one is perfect and self-love is a really long journey and it can be really, really difficult for loads of different reasons. But I believe that the way that you talk to yourself is so important and integral to the way that you live your life. And I know from experience that hating yourself and talking to yourself 
in a way that you wouldn't speak to anyone else in an awful, awful way is just not productive. It's the opposite. <laughs> it is completely and utterly destructive. And it holds so much power. The way that you speak to yourself holds so much power. It's obviously easier said than done. You can just say like, oh, well, I'm going to wake up and love myself today. I'm going to say nice things in my head. Like, it's obviously way bigger than that. But like this science behind affirmations, we all deserve to be nice to ourselves. The next piece of advice I'm going to give is to keep a list of things that you're grateful for and to update that list as often as you can. I started this last year, was it? Yeah, 2020. And I did, I did it every day for, I don't know how long I kept it up for, but it was a while. And I did three things a day that I was grateful for. And sometimes I would sit for ages. Some days, some bad days, I would sit for a long time and not know what to write. But then other days I would write a list of 10 things. And these days I have a long list of everything that I'm grateful for. And some days I'll just read over it. Some days I'll add things to it. You don't have to be that pedantic. I'm just an annoying person. I think like it's really helpful to get it out of your brain and put it on paper um, because it just helps like ruminate in your mind. Positive gratitude. It's just so, I just believe gratitude is so important, especially like at the minute when things are bad for a lot of people. I think it's important to remember what we do have and like everyone's fucking talking about that at the minute and I don't mean it in a way to be like toxically positive because if something is bad something is bad and you're allowed to have bad days and you're allowed to have things that you would change and things that you wish were different that is absolutely fine it's part of life I try to be grateful for the big things like, I've got a roof over my head I've got food in my tummy I've got people who I love in my life and people who love me. But 2020 for me was about being grateful for the small things, practicing that gratitude and saying it out loud as well. So like say if my boyfriend Ryan, he ran me a bath, I would let him know, I would say, I'm so grateful for you doing that for me. That's so lovely. Saying that out loud, practicing that, thinking it, putting out the vibrations of like just being grateful. It makes you realize it like it changes the way that your head feels like it just makes you feel positive because you're looking at all the positivity you have around you and it's definitely something to practice it's kind of like affirmations like if you say it enough in your head it becomes true if you look at the positive things around you more and more positivity will come out of that and i didn't realize it could have such a big impact on my life but since i've started doing it like it just changes everything but i would really advise that you keep a list of things you're grateful for and practice gratitude every day and my last piece of advice for 2021 is to be present and to practice being present. It's kind of like, not similar to my last point, but like in the same vein um, of like being in a certain headspace. I think a lot of people at the minute, because of the pandemic, are struggling with the present. Um, it's so easy to look back at what we had and long for that. And it's so easy to look forward and think, well, eventually things will be better, which is the truth. Like things are going to get better if you need to hear that. I promise you things are going to get better. But when you're doing that, when you're looking back and when you're looking forward, you're missing what is happening now. And that is the only thing that we have. The past is gone. Like that's happened. You're never going to experience that again. It's, it's gone. The future isn't guaranteed. So what happens if, God forbid this pandemic doesn't change anytime soon what happens if we stay in this situation for far longer than we anticipated which is actually what happened we thought in the uk that was going to be like oh a three-week lockdown and then we're out of it um and here we are nearly a year later and the same thing could, ha could happen again we could be in the situation a lot longer than we think we're going to be but also that time just isn't guaranteed at all like i could make plans for this weekend but i could go to bed tonight and not wake up. And that sounds fucking morbid. <laughs> That's the reality. We're not promised any more time than what we have right now. We're not promised the future. The past has already happened. The present is all that we have. And I think that tied in with the 
practicing of gratitude and the practicing of being in the moment and being present has completely changed my perception on being alive in general but then also my perception on existing during covid times i know that sometimes when times are hard people will say there are better days ahead and i know when i was having a really hard time that was difficult for me to deal with because i would just think well right now i feel pain and i want that to stop and thinking that one day it's gonna stop doesn't make me feel any better now but i think on reflection i've realized that if what i'm feeling now is painful then i need to think about what i can do now to change that what i can do basically to make the best of a situation so like the good habits those good habits that i was talking about that are formed in lockdown that was me making the best of a situation because things have been fucking difficult obviously lockdown has been really really hard but i've still taken some good from that and that was by thinking right well this is the situation that we're in right now so how am I going to make that better for me presently and I just think that's so important I also think as well we have a tendency to look forward and think like oh well, once I get this I'll be happy once I've done that I'll be happy once I buy a house then I'll be happy once I've achieved that thing in my career then I'll be happy once I've got a partner then I'll be happy but if we spend our lives waiting for these things and always looking ahead, we're not going to enjoy what's happening right now. Those things might never happen. If you do that, you're already going to be in that mindset. So then even if you do achieve those things, like even if you do buy a house, once you've done that thing, you're going to be thinking, right, well, what next? Instead of just enjoying whatever it is that is happening right now or not even enjoying, but just like living through, like being present, experiencing everything for what it is, make the best of what you can all the time I think the easiest way to do that is to be present and it's completely changed my life and I didn't think it would so give it a try meditation helps with that meditation really helps you to be in the moment <sighs> I just talked and talked and talked for so long and I miss Robin and Jazz. it's easier when they're here and then we can take it in turns and talk and bullshit <laughs> Thanks for listening to me. Yeah, let us know your habits, achievements and advice for 2021. Comment down below. Follow us on our social medias. You can chat with us on there as well. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're keeping safe. <laughs> How sick is everyone of that? Love you. Bye.